In the midst of the 1950s Cold War, the U.S. Navy set its sights on a radical transformation of naval aviation. The star of this high-stakes endeavor was the XF-2Y1 Sea Dart, a seaplane with a mission to shatter the norms of carrier-based aircraft and touch the edge of supersonic speeds. Conceived by Convair's visionary minds, this delta-winged marvel sliced through conventions with its unique hydro skis, designed to glide over water and then lift into the air with an exhilarating rush. It was more than an aircraft. It was a bold statement in engineering, intended to make water runways obsolete and to outmaneuver the enemy with unmatched agility. As the Sea Dart, equipped with its twin Westinghouse engines, thundered across the water, it was a spectacle of power and speed. The hydro skis, tucked beneath its sleek frame, deployed gracefully, cutting through the waves as the aircraft surged towards takeoff speed. Inside the cockpit, pilots were at the helm of an aircraft that was both a warrior and a waterbird, armed with Colt Mark 12 cannons and unguided rockets. Yet, in the wake of white foam and roaring engines, there lingered a quiet whisper of the Sea Dart's impending struggles with nature's elements, a struggle that would ultimately test the limits of this groundbreaking machine. As the world grappled with the tensions of the Cold War in the tumultuous 1950s, the United States Navy embarked on a daring quest to redefine naval aviation with an audacious endeavor known as the Mobile Base Concept. Seeking to extend the range of naval air power to the farthest corners of the globe, the cornerstone of this adventure was the XF-2Y1 Sea Dart, a groundbreaking supersonic seaplane. The genesis of this remarkable aircraft can be traced back to the late 1940s, when the U.S. Navy issued a challenge to the aviation industry. Design a supersonic interceptor aircraft capable of operating from the decks of aircraft carriers. In an era marked by skepticism about the feasibility of launching supersonic jets from these floating platforms, the Navy's concerns were well-founded. Many early supersonic designs demanded extensive takeoff rolls, boasted high approach speeds, and exhibited less than optimal stability and control characteristics, undoubtedly troublesome traits for any aircraft intended for carrier duty. Convair, a renowned aviation company, stepped up to meet this daunting challenge with a bold and ingenious proposal. They envisioned a delta-winged fighter that could take to the skies from the water's surface, a concept that would revolutionize carrier-based aviation. The visionary engineers at Convair's Hydrodynamics Research Laboratory, led by Ernest Stout, conceived an aircraft that could literally take off from the water using retractable water skis. An unprecedented idea. The XF-2Y1 Sea Dart emerged as the embodiment of this audacious vision. It was a seaplane fighter jet designed to overcome the very challenges that had plagued early jets operating from aircraft carriers. With its unique design, it could eliminate the need for the long takeoff rolls that had hindered supersonic aircraft. Moreover, its high approach speeds and stability concerns would be a thing of the past. The absence of a conventional runway on the water's surface also promised reduced vulnerability to enemy attacks, a crucial advantage in the context of the Cold War. In 1951, Convair's proposal received the Navy's green light, resulting in an order for two prototype Sea Dart aircraft. Astonishingly, before a single prototype had even taken to the skies, the Navy had committed to procuring 12 production aircraft, confident in this groundbreaking design. The XF-2Y1 Sea Dart was destined to become a trailblazer in the world of aviation. It was not only the first combat-type aircraft equipped with retractable hydro skis, but also the world's first delta-winged seaplane and the very first supersonic seaplane. One of its most distinctive features was the ingenious replacement of conventional landing gear with retractable skis, designed to conquer not just the skies, but also water, snow, and sand. For takeoff, the hydro skis remained retracted as the sea dart glided across the water's surface at a mere 9 to 11 miles per hour. The skis gracefully extended as the aircraft gathered speed, with full extension at approximately 45 to 55 miles per hour. It was at this point that the Sea Dart's power reached takeoff speed at 145 miles per hour. Remarkably, these skis were equipped with wheels, allowing the Sea Dart to smoothly navigate in and out of the water. Some variants even boasted a single ski. The Sea Dart's lower fuselage featured multiple watertight compartments that safeguarded against sinking in case of damage. 
Dive brakes on the lower rear fuselage served a dual purpose, acting not only as water brakes, but also as a water rudder during surface taxiing. When at rest in the water, the sea dart floated gracefully, with the trailing edge of its wings and the twin hydro skis delicately skimming the water's surface. Even at low speeds, this remarkable aircraft retained its unique posture, with the trailing edge of its wings gently kissing the water. In December 1952, the Sea Dart was transported to the serene waters of San Diego Bay, where its initial tests would take place. This futuristic aircraft held the promise of becoming a fearsome weapon, with plans to equip it with four 20mm Colt Mark 12 cannons and a battery of folding fin unguided rockets. The vision was clear, but the path to realization would be anything but straightforward. At the heart of the Sea Dart were its powerhouses, the Westinghouse XJ46 WEO2 turbojets, equipped with afterburners to deliver exceptional thrust. The intakes were strategically positioned high above the wings to prevent the ingestion of spray, a critical design configuration for a seafaring aircraft. However, even with meticulous planning, execution would soon prove to be a considerable challenge. The original plan called for the XJ46 WEO2 engines, but they were not available for the prototypes. Instead, the Sea Dart took flight with twin Westinghouse J34 WE32 engines, which were significantly less powerful. This initial compromise would come back to haunt the Sea Dart. On January 14, 1953, ED Sam Shannon found himself unintentionally airborne during what was meant to be a fast taxi run, marking the Sea Dart's unexpected first flight. Yet, the formal inaugural flight would follow on April 9, 1953. However, initial flight tests uncovered a daunting obstacle. The prototype sea darts were severely underpowered. While the J-34 WE-32 engines were only a fraction of the power of the intended production engines, the disparity was evident. To compound the issue, even with the high-mounted intakes, seawater intrusion into the engines persisted, necessitating the development of a freshwater injection system. Additionally, the aircraft's fuselage had to undergo a transformation into an area rule body to achieve supersonic speeds, which came at a significant cost. In the early days of its development, the Sea Dart faced numerous challenges that hindered its performance. The underpowered engines that propelled this fighter bestowed upon it a sluggish nature. The hydro skis, a novel concept then, were meant to enable water takeoffs and landings. However, they proved to be less successful than anticipated. The hydro skis generated violent vibrations during takeoff and landing, despite their shock absorbing legs. These issues posed a serious challenge, making it evident that the Sea Dart had yet to find its sea legs. Further complications arose when the aircraft was subjected to rough seas. Its inability to handle adverse weather conditions in rough waters dashed any hopes of open sea recovery missions. The Sea Dart's shortcomings were becoming increasingly apparent. Amidst these trials and tribulations, the Sea Dart prototype underwent various transformations in pursuit of a solution. An experimental single ski configuration showed promise, outperforming the initial twin ski design. The engineers tirelessly continued to experiment with different ski configurations throughout 1957. Efforts to improve the skis and landing gear did make some headway, but the Sea Dart's sluggish performance remained a formidable obstacle. The aircraft simply could not achieve supersonic speeds in level flight with its J-34 engines. Its outdated pre-area rule shape only exacerbated the problem as it led to higher transonic drag. Across the Atlantic, the United Kingdom's Saunders Row Company ventured into a similar endeavor, albeit with limited success. They proposed a ski-equipped fighter, but this concept failed to gain much traction. Intriguingly, the U.S. Navy explored the idea of a submarine aircraft carrier capable of housing three Sea Dart aircraft. These planes would be stored in pressure chambers, hidden within the submarine's hull, and raised to the surface using a portside elevator. While this concept had potential, it never progressed beyond the conceptual stage. Structural challenges, such as the weakening of the hull due to the elevator hole, and the difficulty of transmitting the load from a laden elevator to the hull structure, remained insurmountable obstacles. In the midst of the Korean War, as the world witnessed the dawn of the jet age, 
the Convair Sea Dart attempted to become the world's first and only supersonic seaplane, and thus embarked on a tumultuous journey that would expose the immense challenges of making a seaplane achieve breathtaking speeds. The Sea Dart's development was fraught with difficulties from the start. The jet engines required modifications that added significant weight to the aircraft, jeopardizing its overall performance. The relentless pursuit of speed stressed the airframe structure, and expensive fuselage modifications became necessary to attain even greater velocities. Despite these setbacks, in August 1954, the Sea Dart showcased its capabilities to break the sound barrier. It was a historic achievement, making it the only seaplane to achieve such speeds. However, the Sea Dart's troubles were far from over. By November 1954, the aircraft was still in flight testing, and costly modifications continued to plague the project. Then, a tragic incident on November 4, 1954, would cast a shadow over the Sea Dart's legacy. During an aerial demonstration over San Diego Bay, disaster struck as a prototype Sea Dart, piloted by Charles E. Richburg, disintegrated mid-air. Richburg, a seasoned Navy veteran, inadvertently pushed the airframe beyond its limits. Although he was rescued, he later succumbed to his injuries. In 1956, a significant shift occurred in the U.S. Navy's strategic thinking, leading to a significant decision regarding the Convair Sea Dart program. The Navy had initially invested in the concept of seaplane fighters, with the Sea Dart as a prominent example. However, changes in technical doctrine and the successful integration of supersonic fighters on carrier decks led the Navy to reconsider its priorities. The program faced a crucial setback when Richburg's aircraft crashed further eroding the Navy's interest. Consequently, the Sea Dart program was downgraded to an experimental status, and all plans for production were scrapped. While three service test examples were completed, the two remaining prototypes never had the opportunity to take flight. Out of the five Sea Darts built by Convair in San Diego, only three had the chance to soar through the skies. In 1957, the Sea Dart was officially shelved and stored away. The remaining four examples were retired in 1957, although it's worth noting that despite its retirement, at least one F-2Y was still in storage by 1962. This led to a redesignation as YF-7A under the 1962 United States Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System. The Convair Sea Dart held a unique place in aviation history as the only seaplane to exceed the speed of sound, a truly remarkable achievement. In 1963, Convair recognized its historical significance and donated one of the Sea Darts to a museum. However, this aircraft languished in Convair's storage yard for two decades. It wasn't until 1984 that it found a new home at the San Diego Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park, thanks to dedicated volunteers who worked on its restoration. The Sea Dart was carefully transported and mounted in front of the museum. <laughs>